so in this lecture we are going to study axonometric projections in particular i'm going to study trimetric projections in this particular lecture so sometimes considering a single orthographic projection like top view right view left view etc they actually do not give us a complete idea of the shape of the object so let me again write down the important words here So this problem can actually be handled by using axonometric projections. So by using rotations, we are going to use two type two rotations here and translations. We will be able to manipulate the object. So let me write translations also. So how are you going to manipulate the object such that we will be able to see at least three faces so at least three faces will be visible for an object if the object is a cube okay so if you remember uh, the orthographic projection the top view the side view the left view the right view all of you were giving only one face at a time okay for this particular cube but now what we want to do is we want to view it in such a way said so that three faces will be visible to us so in this case in this type of projections what is the center of projection the center of projection will be infinity is infinity and the projectors are parallel to the coordinate planes so if you see this type of two things these two things actually are of orthographic projection also right so so actually axonometric projection is a type of orthographic projection such that we will be able we must be able to see at least three faces what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to project all the objects on the plane z equal to 0 so what will be the plane of projection the plane of projection is going to be the plane z equal to 0 that is the xy plane so let us see one example so i'm taking this cube which is slightly not aligned with the coordinate planes and i'm going to project the image of the cube on the xy plane so the blue sheet that you see is xy plane and the rays are coming from infinity hitting the object and then they are, the image is formed on that blue sheet so that vertical green axis is zeta that is the z axis and this is how this uh, projection is there so i'm putting i'm drawing the rays now i'm showing you one by one ray so you can see i have projected the object but we are not able to see the image clearly so i will now draw the image how the image will be seen this is the way the edges will be projected on the xy plane so you can see the image is actually now forming this is a, this is clearly an orthographic projection because if the projectors are perpendicular to the plane of projection see this is the image of the object on the given xy plane i will view it from the down side i will also view from the top side and then we will have a better idea i'm going to bring the z axis in front of my eyes so the z axis will enter into my eyes and this is object now let me i will remove the objects so when i remove the object the image will be only be visible so just let me remove the object for the time being so if you just give me a minute so i'm removing the rays first and then i will look it from the top side again let me show you the top view again you take the z axis towards my eyes now i will remove this particular cube so that only the image will be seen clearly 
this is the image this is the original cube so I hope now the concept of axonometric projection is the idea behind it is clearly understood so when I projected the object using axonometric projection I hope you have understood that the original size of the cube was uh, distorted that is the lens which were uh, of suppose a cube of, was of side 2 cm when I projected it so suppose this is the cube when I projected it on the Z plane the project the image was of different length so this is suppose this is 2 cm when I projected this becomes less than 2 cm so this this means that such a thing is called as uh, four shortening so this will be a important word for us so let me write it we are going to now study four shortening factors in this particular lecture so let me take this AB segment and uh, this is the plane the gray sheet is the XY plane and I'm going to project the AB object the segment AB object on this XY plane so I will now draw the rays uh, which are coming from infinity they hit the object AB and the image is going to be formed on this plane XY which is the gray sheet so these are the projectors which are perpendicular to the plane of projection and you see the image is formed on the XY plane so let me uh, just join the particular things on the plane so I will see this is the image uh, A dash B dash so that segment is A dash B dash now if you look at the length AB length AB is large uh, larger than the length or A dash B dash so so this we will take the ratio of A dash B dash and AB that ratio will be called as the four shortening factor so now this four shortening factor I'm viewing everything along Z axis so I'm my projectors are are along the z-axis so that is why these this foreshortening factor will be called as fz in future so this is uh, suppose ab is 3.09 and a dash b dash 2 so the foreshortening factor will be the ratio 2 upon 3.09 okay so you you notice that if i move this thing what is going to happen the a dash b dash is going to is remaining the same and uh, ab is increasing in length even if I move it on this side still the same thing is going to happen so still a a b will be more and a dash b dash will be fixed too so this ratio will always be less than one okay it is equal to one whenever this a b and a dash b dash are parallel to each other I hope you can see this now so this means that this length a b is shortened and it becomes a dash b dash that is why it is called four shortening ratio so we will write here that uh, f which is f a dash b dash upon a b the length of a dash b dash upon length of a b if i am viewing it up all along the z axis so suppose this was z axis then this foreshortening ratio will be this factor will be called as fz fz similarly if i am viewing the things along so this is my xyz axis suppose my rays are the projectors are parallel to the x axis and the image is going to form on the yz plane in this case the foreshortening ratio will be called as what fx because i am viewing it along the x axis so similarly the, the definitions of fx and fy are similar similarly fx and fy have the same formula okay so we now from this we have understood that the foreshortening ratio will be always less than or equal to 1 i have explained you when the foreshortening ratio will be equal to 1 foreshortening ratio will also be always greater than or equal to sorry be greater than or equal to 0 because if i am looking at an object which is like this suppose AB is like this and if I'm projecting it on the XY plane what is going to happen if the rays are parallel to the object itself the image will be just what image will be a point A dash B dash and in that case length of A dash B dash 
will this will become zero and this will be some length l so the ratio will become zero this means that the four shortening ratio always lies between zero and one okay now the question that one should really ask me is that why does it happen that when i'm using axonometric projection why does the image always uh, always shortens in the length so why it shortens so this is clear that what type of projections we are studying we are studying parallel projections correct and uh, what is the another type of projection the other type of projection is the perspective projection which i have explained in my previous lecture so if i have an object which is ab and if i'm using the perspective projection i'm going to locate the center of uh, my projection at a finite distance and this is my plane of projection what is going to happen this means that the projectors will go like this and in that case the object will get enlarged okay in which but in which type of projection in perspective projection whereas what happens in parallel projections is that either the object remains same or it shortens its image so that's why the the element of four shortening factor will always be observed in parallel projections so now it's time to understand how does the matrix of axonometric projection actually looks like so if i take a point which is say x y z one in the homogeneous coordinates okay and when i'm going to project it on the on the z equal to zero plane the point p dash will be looking x star y star the third coordinate will be zero and one is the homogeneous coordinate so this means that i have projected the point on the plane z equal to zero so this means that the matrix of pro, of axonometric projection first of all must have the third column equal to 0 because it's a projection on the z equal to 0 plane so if i take the matrix in general of axonometric projection should like should look like this x2 y2 x3 y3 and x4 y4 with a homogeneous coordinates on the last column okay we want to find that what should be my xi yi okay so that this particular matrix starts looking uh, like an axonometric projection okay it should be the characterization of all those matrices of uh, which represent what which represent axonometric projection so before writing the telling you how this matrix is to be obtained we are going to use two two rotations and one projection in axonometric projection so we are going to use so these two three points are now very important for us we are going to use first i'm going to use rotation about y axis uh, by an angle phi then i'm going to use rotation about x axis by an angle theta and after that i will use projection on the z equal to zero plane which is pz okay so in general axonometric projections will be obtained by rotation by y by an angle phi composed with then rotation of uh, about axis x by an angle uh, theta and then i will use the projection matrix now we all know that what are these three matrices actually looking like so i will quickly write them here so the simplest is the projection matrix which is 0 1 1 0 1 everything else is zero whatever i'm not writing okay here i have a cos theta sin theta then minus sin theta cos theta okay and the one here all are 4 by 4 matrices this is cos phi this is minus sine phi you know that rotation matrix for y is slightly different and then you have a sine phi and then you have a cos phi and a one so when i actually multiply these three matrices the answer that i will get i will write here i will get uh, cos phi then i will get sine phi sine theta then here i will get cos theta here i will get sin phi here i will get minus cos phi sin theta 
and a one year else everywhere there is a zero it being a projection matrix at the end i will have zero 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 as a third column so this column will be zeros it means that it's a projection on the z equal to zero plane okay so this the obtained thing that this we have obtained this is the general form of a axonometric projection so henceforward in all the lectures i will be using this particular matrix whenever i talk about axonometric projection where phi remember what is phi phi is the angle of rotation about y axis and theta is angle of rotation about x axis so now what we will do is we will calculate the four shortening factors in this uh, section so we know that there are three four shortening factors fx which is four shortening along x fy which is four shortening along y and fz which is a four shortening along the z axis so what we will do is we will still take o as our origin which is 0 0 0 and let me take a point a which is 1 0 0 on the x axis so i will derive the four shortening factor along the x axis and similarly we will get the four shortening factors along y and z okay now in the homogeneous coordinates if i say o o is actually written as 0 0 0 with a 1 and a in the homogeneous coordinates will be written as 1 0 0 with a 1 in the end so this means that the axonometric projection t maps o to what it maps o to o dash which is the image of o and it maps a to the point a dash okay so what is o operated on t so what is o o is 0 0 0 1 with a matrix t what is matrix t the matrix t i have written above so when i multiply this 0 0 0 1 with this particular matrix i am going to again get 0 0 0 1 so this means that origin is mapped always to origin under an axonometric projection when i operate a point on that mat on the t what is a a is 1 0 0 1 and if i multiply this by that matrix the above matrix the solution i'm going to get when i solve it when i multiply these this with this matrix i am going to get cos phi then i'm going to get sin phi sin theta then i'm going to get 0 and 1 do you observe what is this these four people are exactly the first row of your axonometric projection matrix okay so this is uh, this is your o dash which is actually o and this is your a dash now as, as i told you if i want to calculate the four shortening factor along x i have to take the ratio a dash b dash image upon the original object the original object uh, let, i'm sorry i'm having o dash a dash here as an image and the original object is oa now what is o dash a dash what is the distance between 0 0 this is o dash what is the distance between 0 0 0 and the distance between cos phi sin phi sin theta and 0 so i'm going to use the distance formula so by the distance formula it will be equal to square root of cos square phi minus 0 square minus zeros then sin sin phi sin theta square and 0 minus 0 square divided by what is length oa now if you look at o and a carefully o is the origin and a is the point 1 0 0 along the x axis so this is o and this is a what is the distance between o and a the distance between o and a is 1 so this means that i have obtained a formula of four shortening factor along x which is nothing but what which is nothing but cos square phi plus sin square phi sin square theta where what is phi i hope you remember what is phi 
phi is the rotation of y axis about phi that is phi and what is theta rotation of x about angle theta okay so this is these two matrices involve phi and theta and this formula is going to give you the formula for foreshortening factor along x axis okay along the x axis so if i carefully see this is nothing but the sum of the squares of the elements in the first row of my axonometric projection matrix so now i suppose you will guess that if i want the formula for foreshortening factor along the y axis it will be sum of the squares of this and its square root right so what is the foreshortening factor along the y axis the foreshortening factor along the y axis is square root of cos square theta and which is cos theta later on and what is the foreshortening factor along the z axis it will be sin square phi plus cos square phi sin square theta so that is going to be the foreshortening factor along the z axis so united it is uh, what cos sin square phi sorry sin square phi plus cos square phi sin square theta so these are the three four shortening factors for an axonometric projection so suppose i have an object which i am supposed to rotate by 30 degrees about y axis and then i am going to rotate it about 45 degrees about x axis and then i am going to project it on the x y plane so project on z equal to 0 so what am i interested it uh, to find here here i am interested is to interested in finding the four shortening factor fx fy fz and what is the matrix of uh projection okay so i hope it is now clear i'm just taking this for the sake of practice so we will first know we first know that rotation about y axis uh, by 30 degrees means phi is 30 degrees and theta is rotation about 45 degrees about x axis so it is theta is 45 degrees and therefore the matrix of projection when i use that matrix i know what is the matrix given by it is given by cos phi sin phi sin theta 0 0 and so on so when i put those values of phi and theta in the above matrix what i am going to get is i am going to get a root 3 by 2 then i am going to one 1 by 2 root 2 whatever entries i am not writing are here again going to be treated as 0 this you will get cos 45 will be 1 by root 2 third column is 0 because it's a projection matrix and uh, this will be 0001 okay the third row is important which is 1 by 2 1 by 2 and minus root 3 upon 2 root 2 and else everything is zero so this is the matrix of axonometric projection clearly we know that what is fx fx is the sum of the squares of the first row and its square root so it will be root 3 by 2 square plus 1 upon 2 root 2 whole square and this means that fx will come out to be 0.935 similarly if you use a formula for fy fy is square root of cos square theta which will come out to be 0.707 and third was fz which will come out to be 0.791 observe that we had noted about that the, all the four shortening factors should lie between 0 and 1 here i observe something very much important is that look at all the three numbers fx fy fz all the three numbers are distinct they came up to be three different real numbers okay when all the four shortening factors are distinct such an axonometric projection is called as trimetric projection okay this is the title of our lecture so what is a trimetric projection a projection in which all the four shortening factors are going to be different numbers so now let us uh, take one triangle let's take uh, a triangle abc with a is as abc are the coordinates of the 
triangle and I'm going to use the same rotations uh, because we have already calculated the matrix above the rotation uh, about uh, y axis by 30 degrees and rotation about x axis by 45 degrees and then projection. So the above action metric matrix will be the will actually be the same. OK, so let me write that matrix. But now I'm going to write the matrix for which will help us in our calculation. So that was root 3 by 2. So which is 0 0.8. 6, 6. Then here I'm going to write 0 0.0353 and else everywhere is 0. Here I have 0 0.707. Here I have 0.5. Then I have here minus 0 0.612. Okay, I know 1 over here. So let the rest everything is 0. So this is the actual matrix which I'm going to use in my computations okay this is going to help me in the computations so when I want to find the image now the we know that object X is what is our object our object is triangle ABC which is having the coordinates let me write the coordinates are 1 1 1 the second with the coordinates of B is 3 1 1 the coordinates of C is 2 3 1 okay and then what is the image the final image X dash is going to be what XT right so let us see what is this answer this is the matrix T and this is the object X which is having which is 1 1 1 3 1 1 and 2 3 1 let me now calculate the product X star T will be the uh, final image which we have denoted by X dash so this will be the product of X and T so these coordinates uh, we will see now in uh, an animation to check whether these coordinates are correct or not. So this is a triangle ABC where A was 1 1 1 3 B was 3 1 1 and C was 2 3 1. Since the Z coordinate is 1 you can see that this triangle is actually parallel to the XY plane because it this triangle will be completely lying on the plane Z equal to 1. Then I will rotate the triangle about y axis by 30 degrees so I will remove the previous triangle now now this blue colored triangle you can see is rotation about of the triangle about the about 30 degrees uh, about y axis by 30 degrees about y axis then I'm going to rotate it by 45 degrees about uh, x axis and you can see that this upper triangle is now it's the dark blue color is now the next image and uh, I will show you I will completely rotate the entire screen in this is the thing after rotating it by 45 degrees about x axis and now I will, I will project this triangle on the plane x equal to 0 see you will see the projection down now see that is a projection of this particular triangle on uh, uh, about the z axis okay so let me remove that upper triangle now so the original triangle is this with three dots you see the coordinates that we have seen let me rotate and bring the xy plane uh, in front of us and let the z axis enter into our eyes directly so you see that these three were the exactly points that we have obtained by our computation this 1.360.445 was our a, a, a dash means which we are calling a triple dash then we have the image of b was 3.1 1.15 and c was 2.23 and 2.22 so our calculations on scilab and our verification on the geogebra are now matching okay so this finishes this problem with this i hope the topic of axonometric projections in particular trimetric projections is understood in the next lectures we will be comparing trimetric projections with the with the new projections called the diametric projections and isometric projections